You need a ballast to regulate the amount of power that is fed to a lamp in a standard grow light system. Setting one up takes no time at all, whether you've chosen a magnetic or digital unit. Here we'll be focusing on the latter. We highly rate digital ballasts. If you're going to grow plants with an HPS or metal halide light, this technology represents the best option. For CDM users, it's still the only option. Digital ballasts are more efficient, compact, lighter, quieter, cooler running and longer lasting than magnetic ballasts. You get a number of convenient features, which normally includes manual dimming and for HPS systems, a wattage boosting overdrive setting. Digital ballasts also provide a consistent level of light that's unaffected by different voltage ranges or any fluctuations in the main supply. And for HPS and metal halide lamps, they're high frequency, enabling you to enjoy a better light output, a longer lamp life, and more accurate color rendering. Our top seller, the 600 watt Bay 6 digital ballast, ticks all of the boxes, offering you exceptional quality for a very affordable price. Let's take a look at how you install and operate one as part of an HPS or metal halide grow light system. Prior to starting out, just make sure the wattage of the ballast matches that of the lamp, and both are compatible types of lighting equipment. For example, pair a 600 watt HPS or metal halide lamp with a 600 watt ballast. Even though it is dimmable and provides lower wattage settings, you must match against the main indicated output, i.e. 600 watts. Ideally, place your ballast on top of a slab or brick. Failing that, a hard, bare floor will work, as long as it's not wood flooring. Some models, like the 600 watt Bay 6, can even be mounted to a wall if that's preferred. You need the unit to be within easy reach of your reflector and a mains socket, or extension lead, and nowhere near anything that might leak. Generally speaking, you should try and keep the ballast outside of your tent or room in hotter months, to give more space to plants and help keep temperatures down, as these products do generate some heat. In winter, when the cold hits hard, consider bringing it closer to your growing area for a bit of added warmth. Put the cable from the reflector into the relevant cable connector on your ballast, then plug your ballast into a mains socket. You'll need to attach the included IEC lead and plug to do so. As this digital model has a dimmer, choose the desired wattage setting before turning on the power. If you want to put your lighting system on a timer, combine with a suitable contactor or select a timer or combined timer contactor capable of handling the power load of your light. Our heavy duty timer proves ideal for single light rooms. And that's you sorted. In terms of good practice, we recommend these following guidelines. Always double check the securedness of your lamp and cable connections prior to use. Never cover your ballast with anything whilst it operates. Allow a minimum of 15 minutes after switching off your ballast or experiencing a power cut before turning it back on again. Wait several minutes after switching off your ballast before disconnecting your reflector. If you want to change the wattage setting, always turn off the light and then adjust as necessary to avoid damaging the lamp. And never use the overdrive function for a metal halide lamp. This could have disastrous consequences. Finally, we'd suggest replacing your digital ballast every 10 years for maximum effectiveness and top performance. If you have any questions, leave a comment below and we'll try our best to answer. Don't forget to give us a like if you found this video helpful and subscribe to our channel for high quality, regularly released content.